Well, let's talk about this uh, this Raw show. Now, the opening segment was very good. Brock Lesnar came out, and uh, everyone loves him. He talked about the match at SummerSlam. Talks about uh, he's going to slaughter Roman Reigns like a hog. And then out comes Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman starts doing this promo. Paul Heyman is doing everything in his power to try to make you care about another Roman Reigns-Brock Lesnar match. And uh, he actually does a line that I'm not going to say on the air. But uh, it involved... Anyway, Lesnar is howling with laughter at this line. And he's about to repeat it when, of all people, Theory comes out. Theory wants to make it clear he's going to cash in against either of these guys. He's very upset at Brock for throwing him off the Elimination Chamber, which, by the way, they showed a bunch of replays, but they don't show the landing because he got thrown off and landed on his feet, and I guess they thought it didn't look dramatic enough. God forbid the guy kill himself. But uh, So they show him flying through the air, and then the screen goes black, and you hear, clang! You get to use your imagination for what happened. So then Chad Gable and Otis show up, and they jump Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar no-sells it. He destroys both of these guys. Suplexes Chad everywhere. F5s Otis on the announce table. Kills them both. Crowd goes nuts. Heyman's all worried. This was a very good opening segment. And that's that's about where all of the uh, very good stuff ends. We had uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor and Rey Mysterio and Dominic out there. And Damian Priest and Finn Balor talked and talked and talked and talked. And they're trying to convince Dominic to join the Judgment Day. They also noted that in a couple of weeks, it's Rey Mysterio's 20th anniversary of his WWE career in Madison Square Garden. They're going to celebrate his 20th anniversary. So I think we can all probably figure out what might be happening to Rey on that day. So it led to Finn Balor versus Rey Mysterio. And they had a good match. This was a good match. And Finn Balor ended up pinning him clean in the middle with the coup de grace. They do this, and of course the storyline here is that, hey, look, Dom, your dad is old, and he sucks, and he can't win, so you should go with us. A great way to get over, uh, you know, I should say, I shouldn't say young Ray, but a uh, good way to get over legendary Ray Mysterio for his 20th anniversary coming up in two weeks. I hope producer Dom was actually paying attention to this segment, because if he just overheard that, he's going to have some questions for you when we go to break. You heard what? The legendary Rey Mysterio? <laughs> what? Sure. No, nothing. Never mind. Go ahead. what I say, hey, Dom? How, how dare I interrupt you? I didn't, I didn't swear ahead. today. No, I didn't say you. Never mind. He's Dom. Everybody never on the mind. chat has absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Thank That's you fine. for that interjection that only you I'm out of here. Understood. I'll see you in a couple minutes. I'm gone. Becky Lynch cut a promo. She's standing on top of the announce table. And uh, she's upset that she, uh, whatever, you know, can't get a title shot. She says, I don't care who wins this match tonight. I want the championship match at SummerSlam. So she sits there to do commentary. It is Bianca versus Carmella, a match we have seen before. It is for the women's title. I don't know why, nor do the announcers. This match went 11 minutes. And for about nine minutes, it was much better than their pay-per-view match. But then, this match just keeps going. And it keeps going and going and going. And they're kicking out and kicking out and kicking out. And it just keeps going. It just keeps spinning around. And finally, it went on so long I don't remember what happened. Oh, yeah. So they're outside the ring. And uh, Carmella and Bianca are brawling. And Carmella rakes her eyes, which, of course, is illegal. And then she rolls into the ring. And then Bianca's going to roll into the ring. The ref's right there. She's counting. Eh, seven, eight. And uh, right then, uh, Becky comes up and she starts yelling at Bianca. And they're arguing. And so the ref doesn't say, hey, get out of here, Bianca or Becky or whoever. He just keeps counting. And so, of course, Bianca's counted out. She loses to Carmella. And then, of course, Carmella parades around with the title. Corey Graves says that she's the champ. Everyone else says she isn't. This crowd was dead for this segment here. Then we had Miz TV with Ciampa. So first we have a long Miz TV segment. They talk and they talk and they talk. Miz is angry at... Uh, well, actually, he's he's going to give Logan Paul one more chance. 
Next week, Logan Paul is going to be on the show. He says Logan has one more chance to agree to be his tag team partner. Otherwise, he's going to be in trouble. And uh, they're going on and on and on. AJ Styles interrupts. And there was actually a great line here where uh, Miz somehow, and it's never even explained how, the match that has been signed is Miz and Ciampa versus AJ in a two-on-one handicap match. Who signed this? Why AJ agreed? None of this is made clear. So AJ uh, wants Ezekiel to, uh, or I guess Ezekiel comes out to be his partner. But anyway, some, somewhere in here, Miz, you know, uh, AJ saying, hey, you know, Miz, I see you have to have a friend here to help you out. You can't do this one-on-one. You know what that makes you, Miz? That makes you, and Miz says, don't say it. And AJ says, that makes you. And Miz says, don't say it. So AJ says, that makes you a coward. And Miz goes, oh, okay. Then Miz, then AJ goes, a coward with tiny balls. Then, of course, Miz is all angry. But Miz totally not caring that he was called a coward. That was a great moment. So anyway, Ezekiel comes out, and uh, now it's going to be a tag match. Miz is angry that it's a tag match, and uh, even though, whatever. So they do this match, and I swear to God, this is the finish. AJ, bear with me here. AJ and The Miz are in the ring in this tag team match. AJ puts him in the calf crusher. Miz is about to tap Miz's partner in this tag team match, breaks up the hold, and the referee calls for the bell. Announcer Corey Gray starts screaming, What was that? Why was that a DQ? What's going on here? What a horrible call. Then they go, oh, uh, you know, Ciampa can't contain his anger because he's now he's pounding on AJ, even though this is long after the disqualification. Then they start talking about, well, the illegal man. The illegal man? Bro, there was nothing but tag team match on the show. It was one guy breaking up a pin after another. But, man, in this match, it was a disqualification. The crowd is booing. Ah. Ugh. And this whole segment, between all of the talking and the match, 24 minutes. I sat for 24 minutes through all of this to have a disqualification when a, when a tag partner broke up a hold in a tag team match. Now I was fuming. We had Alexa Bliss and Asuka versus Dewdrop and Nikki Ash. The whole match is Corey Graves saying, you know, Alexa was a lot better before she just became normal. And then she wins. She pins Nikki Ash with a DDT in the middle of the ring. So we may get spooky Alexa Bliss again. That's what they're teasing. We had a long Usos promo. You got the, the gist of the show yet? Long Usos promo. They go on and on and on. The Street Profits come out. My shoulder wasn't down. They go on and on and on. Who's going to be the referee at SummerSlam? They go on and on and on. Then R-Truth comes out. He wants to be the referee. He's got a ref shirt on. Bunch of comedy, bunch of whatever. And then the Uso so say, hey, can you get that, uh, what do they call him? A joke ass or something like that? They called him something. So this makes Truth so mad that he wants to fight. But then he notes, only if it's three on two. Well, then out comes MVP and Omos. You know how long this has gone, by the way? MVP and Omos come out. So Omos ends up being the third man on the Usos team. So it is the Usos and Omos versus the Street Profits and R-Truth. Anybody want to guess the finish? It is the Usos and Omos against the Street Profits and Truth. What do you think the finish is? Huh? Well, if you guessed Omos pinned Truth, wrong! Omos pinned Truth. Dawkins! Dawkins! Clean in the middle of the ring! What? Sweating profusely at this point. All the windows opened in this house. They turned the air on. I was dying. And Seth Rollins promo, a bunch of laughing. You know how I feel about that laughing. Uh, another cryptic video package. Is it Edge? Is it uh, Bray? Is it the two of them? Is it Alexa? Who knows? 
And then finally, 10.35 p.m. Time for the main event. Hey, you got 25 minutes for the main event. Well, 10.35, Lashley comes out. Thank God for our front page report for this this, uh, breakdown. 10.35, Lashley comes out. 10.37, Riddle comes out. 10.38, commercial break. 10.43, replay of Riddle giving Rollins an RKO. 10.44, Rollins comes out. 10.45, 10.45, Theory comes out. 10.45, main event finally begins. Main event begins 10.45, wasted 10 minutes. 10.49, commercial break. Finally, 10.52, oh wait, not yet! We got a plug for NXT this week. Finally at 10.53, the return of the main event. So we got about 8 minutes of television time. And uh, Lashley and Riddle beat Rollins and Theory. And uh, Riddle got the win. Bro, I'm out. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Observer.com. Did I mention how much I hated that Raw show? You seemed Did like I you didn't that? like it. No. You... And you know what's funny about it is, when they actually did stuff, I liked it. But dude, they're, they waste so much time on this show. It is exactly, it is exactly what we talked about for years. So what's the ideal length of a show? 90 minutes. If they took out every bit of BS on this show, it'd be a 90-minute show. But my God. And then someone was like, I wish Brian had this much rage for NXT 2.0. Bro, I prefer NXT 2.0 to this show. It's only two hours, so I save an hour of my life watching it. And you know what? Whatever you want to say about NXT, at least they do a segment, and then they go on to the next thing. And then they go on to the next thing. And they keep the show moving. Dude. This is, you know how long three hours is? 180 180 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Okay. When they, when they, it would be one thing if you did like a three hour NXT 2.0. Okay. That's still too long because it's three hours, but at least it would be a three hour show that was three hours long. This is somehow a three hour show that's five hours long. It takes for, it feels like you're watching this show for years because nothing happens for minutes on end and they do this they do this every week that third hour because our our front page who writes this on the front who writes the front page report i'll plug him in a second but the point is they do this every week he, he points it out they always at at uh 10 35 it's time for the main event and and by the way he didn't even put in the commercial before the first entrance at 10 35 from 10 20 to 11 o'clock there's nothing but filler and about eight minutes of wrestling. And you wonder why that third hour dies every time. Brutal. I wonder how much the average fan fast forwards and what they fast forward through. Because all of the video packages, there's so much of that filler. And I don't I guess it's working. I guess it's something that they have fallen upon that seems to be working for them. I just Here's a a ring entrance, and then we're going to go to commercial. Then we're going to come back with a video package hyping something that's got to do with WWE shop or this or that to an interview to this. Then we get back to the ring. It just it I am still not used to that kind of flow. I know I'm old. If it's working, I guess I can't say anything. It's just it's hard as a viewer. I can't believe I'm the only one that. uh, Yes. Uh, I guess you could stick around for it, but when you have a DVR, I mean, to me, that's like 10 minutes you could be doing something else, checking scores, go doing anything else. And I wonder when people are watching this on DVR, how much their fingers just on the fast forward button until they get to the match itself or somebody that's cutting a promo that they actually like. Because unfortunately, too many of these promos are also just mindless filler, especially the backstage ones. It's not really pushing anything across. I don't want to. I don't want to add to my complaints, but like, if we pretend this is real, <laughs> they are absolutely completely incompetent. Because, dude, they had like no matches for the show. Every single match had to be set up by some angle, some angle where people came out and talked. Other than that, apparently, would had no matches. If nobody yeah. would have come out to talk, we would have had no matches on the show. And the but funny thing is, we did the lineup on what day was it? Monday. Monday. Yeah. And then later in the afternoon, two of the matches vanished. They stopped advertising. No, it was Sunday. I, I did the lineup Sunday night with Dave. They had three matches. They had three things announced on WWE.com Sunday night. By Monday, they were down to one. 
They just took out two of the things. It's Brutal. the Muppet Show. It's the Muppet Show. What's going to happen? We don't know. Gonzo's got a plan of everything that's going to happen. Kermit's ready to do it, and then something goes sideways, and this happens or that happens, and that's that's WWE. That's at least Raw. SmackDown's pretty much the same way, but certainly Raw is the... It's a sports entertainment variety show. You might see some wrestling. Who knows? But we got personalities. At least they have a few personalities. I like seeing Dolph Ziggler back. Um, I know he's done everything. <laughs> he's tired. Talk about that. But that's... The thing with Dolph is, at least for what they want Austin Theory to be, he's the right guy to work with. The thing is, this whole time, where has Dolph been? You couldn't have like come up with an idea where he was kind of floating on the side to be brought in here. To It's just out of nowhere. His music hits. He walks out the middle of the match. He sits down, and then he... He's now all of a sudden he's got a beef with Theory. After the last time we saw him, he had a beef with who was it? Uh, somebody that was helping out. Uh, somebody was going against the Miz or something like that. Him and Bobby Roode. So, where's Bobby Roode at? You know it's funny, Mike. <laughs> you know it's what's funny. That? You know what I thought watching that. What you do? What you think? Well, I'm sure you've said it many times, but I know you've said it before. Uh huh. Well. Look at these WrestleManias. They they brought back Goldberg. They brought back Brock Lesnar. They brought back. This. They brought back yeah. that. You're right. Well, what are they going to do, you said? Who are they going to bring back down the road when these guys can't be brought back anymore? Well, we're getting our answer. Yeah. Dolph Ziggler. Here's Because the literally, though. they brought him back like he was a returning massive star of the past. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You bring Dolph back 10 years uh, uh, from now at a WrestleMania... Well, actually, I guess you can do that. There's, they can do anything that they want. They can do anything that they want. But what would be, uh, you know, probably more behoove them more is actually have Dolph Ziggler show up on TV every once in a while, get a win. He doesn't have to be tied into a storyline. He just stays strong. And I just, I don't know. He and Bobby Roode both. You know, why have a tag division with no teams when you have Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode right there? Why are Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode not full-time in NXT? Because we talked about that before several times. Who would have been perfect to go down to NXT 2.0 and be a regular down there and hang out and all that sort of stuff and try to help these guys get better, including guys like Damon Kemp and other guys who have actual amateur pro wrestling backgrounds in the same way that Dolph Ziggler does? But they didn't decide to do that. Rusty, Rusty Rose, ten four eighty six. <laughs> dusty, is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. Her and Herman and Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. <laughs> way back then, they had cha chain barricades, <laughs> and then they had a tag team with Rich Fl uh, Rick Flair. And some more guys, and so that was that. I'm just too who, who did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.